APC crisis gets messier as faction nullifies Buni's chairmanship and Aldu declares himself CECPC chair. And the Rights Group Center for Democracy and Development says security agencies have killed over 13,000 Nigerians since 2011. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Kong. The crisis of leadership in the ruling All Progressive Congress APC took a turn for the worse following the purported disbandment of the Governor May Malabuni led Ketika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee by one of the support groups of the party. Now, the progressive youth movement PYM uh, is named, has named its leader, Prince Mustafa Aoudou, as chairman of the new CECPC with mandate uh, to conduct the party's national convention come February the 26th of 2022. Well, joining us to discuss this is a former member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Honorable Babatunde Ogala, he is SAN, and political analyst Biodun Shoumi. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Good evening, man. Great. Uh, I'm going to start with you, um, Sagala, because you are a member of the All Progressive Congress. Why do you think, um, or what do you think is responsible for the infighting at the national level, especially uh, from the Zamfara State axis? Well, I'm not in a position to tell you what exactly is, uh, could be responsible for whoever feels um, disaffection. Of course, the politics is a contest of um, a lot of factors that come into play, including the power play. And um, perhaps uh, in Zamfara, from what I read in the papers, um, a faction feels dissatisfied. That's the Yari Marafa faction about the conduct of the Congress. And um, they felt I'm not satisfied with it. And if I hear, they may have gone to court and they are expressing their dissatisfaction. But um, suffice to say that um, these are normal practices in any political setting, any contest for power at any level, be it in the clubs, be it in our church societies. People would always agree, and uh, somewhere along disagree, I mean, and I'm sure somewhere along the line they will also find uh, um, one way or the other to resolve their differences. Um, I can only speculate on what I've read in the papers about what the Zamfara group that says is not happy or um, um, not um, accepting what is playing out as stated. And it all boils down to the Congress, the conduct of the Congress. Many so I'm um, sure the party at um, the various levels or through the courts would find a way to resolve this uh, um, disagreements. Many have speculated that this infighting is as a result of positions that um, people are positioning themselves for a higher office. We all know that uh, Mr. President gave a nod to the party um, to conduct its convention come February. Uh, and the CC CECPC has had its issues over and over again. We've seen, um, um, we've seen a senior advocate of Nigeria who's in your party, Festus Kiyamu, had called on um, the party leadership to do something to plug all loopholes so that there will not be continuous court cases affecting the leadership of the party. Uh, but other than the fact that people are positioning themselves, do you also hold that position of Festus Kiyamu about <coughs> plugging loopholes to avoid court cases? No, well, um, what I recall Festus Kiyamu said was um, in the um, Festus Kiyamu spoke after the judgment of the Supreme Court yes. in uh, the Zamfara case. Yes. And if it might interest you to know, I first came up with that position, which Festus Kayamo himself also aligned with me. Mm -hmm. And then um, what we warned about at the time was that the party should um, take a clear hint from the Supreme Court decision on the tenure of uh, the uh, Governor Bully sitting as the CC, uh, the chairman of the party. That was what first was came out. So that was a view I shared also, of being a past national legal advisor of the party, because I'm the immediate past national legal advisor of the party. And we did advise that the party should take a hint and go back to 
conduct our affairs in accordance with the constitution of the party, the Electoral Act, and the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I also did write on that. And that's what Professor Kayamo, I recall, also spoke about. Simply put, what we advised was that the party should be run in accordance with its constitution. Is that being done as we speak? Well, I'm not in a position to tell you from outside, but um, from what I've seen, it would appear our advice either is not being heeded or the CCPC um, is trying to put structures in place to heed the advice. Perhaps that is what is also informing the need or the move to ensure that the party has democratically elected leaders as prescribed by its um, constitution, the Electoral Act, and indeed the uh, constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Shawumi, let me come to you. There seems to be no love lost between Governor Buni and Senator Marfa. This has been an ongoing battle between the two big wigs within the party in the state. Um, many would also point to this um, bad energy or the bad blood between them as some of the drawbacks within the party. Now, we also know that um, there are issues that have not been addressed between them. If these issues are addressed, I'm asking you, do you think that this might, one way or the other, bring some peace and calm within the party, especially in Zamfara State? Oh, yes. Um, <clears throat> yes, um, it's quite clear that um, there's an intense battle um, going on in the in Zamfara State over the heart of ABC, who controls the ABC as a political party within the state, um, not only the structures, but define uh, the future, uh, the immediate future of the party within the state. So within that context, we've seen some, some other actions of um, uh, the Buni-led, um, Buni as a, as a factor in that battle, and also Marafa, there have been several interpretations of what has been going on involving um, also the leading opposition party. So uh, within that context, one is likely going to conclude that it seems the Sanfara case is getting more complex. Um, therefore, it may not necessarily uh, get resolved as expected or as hoped, either um, by the courts or through uh, the party. Um, the, the both parties, you know, the two opposing parties are bitterly opposed to each other and it seems very determined to slug it out to the end. Um, how that will work out, uh, we don't know. Uh, but what seems clear to me is that it is most unlikely that um, the party leadership will be able to resolve this issue, simply because Buni himself is um, a factor in this very dispute. So therefore, who else will resolve it other than Mr. President? Mr. President, um, in all good intents and purposes, or as um, perceived by many, uh, is most unlikely going to get involved um, in resolving issues like that you know, um, at the party. Uh, we've seen examples in the past where Mr. President either stand aloof or will not play a significant role in resolving issues like that. Um, is most likely going to leave the politicians to, to slug it out. So if you look at those two viewpoints, it's more likely that this issue will not be resolved by the party or um, by the courts, but more likely that it will end up leading to a split um, in San Francisco State APC. Well we, already see, well, we already see that split as we speak. And that group, we don't know how powerful they are, but they have already um, decided that this is going to be their leader. But let me take you back to the elections in 2019 and what the APC in Zamfara State suffered. Um, this, is also, this was also as a result of disagreements within the party. Now we're here in 2021 where the party's convention is a few months away from now. Should the APC have not learned something from what happened uh, in 2019? Let's not forget, the same, almost the same thing happened in River State and it's still brewing as we speak. The party at some point said that they were going to, the APC Reconciliation um, uh, Committee had assured members that there was going to be fair hearing in order to be able to deal with this issue. But months down the line, it seems that nothing has been done. And just as you have said, it might continue to linger, but 
does that mean that this might cost the APC again uh, some seats, if not all, in Zamfir State come 2023? Well, we should always understand that uh, there's opposition parties uh, in the country. Even within the same party, you have people of different, you know, opposing views on issues. You also have uh, uh, major issues like uh, presidential elections uh, coming up. Politicians are likely going to uh, meddle into each other's affairs, you know, with a view to achieve their own purposes. Um, so what you see going on, despite the fact that uh, we knew what happened in Samfara, how they lost Samfara the last election, we also saw the problem in Ivers and all that. Uh, but in the way of politicians, uh, that is not an issue. For them, it's a battle lost. Um, we need to get ready for another battle another day. And uh, that is how politics, uh, our politicians view the issues like that. They seem so, you know, there seems to be so deep-eated division in a way that I do not think um, it really matters to so much to them about whether they will lose the control of the state again um, to opposing party. Um, those who are in, in this, you know, they've allowed ego to come into it and other issues. So they can't believe really before that too much, like many other party members or many observers, uh, that look, have you not learned anything? You know, when ego comes into it, then it becomes a different game. And particularly, if there's a second agenda, it's a, a plan, you know, to ensure that um, uh, the state um, APC party um, is not allowed to to remain as one, then, you know, the other uh, opposing parties are likely going to meddle into it, and uh, you have things more protected than what you would expect. So, in any case, whatever be that as it may, one would expect APC you know, to put their house in order. You would have some areas where this would be possible. It's the same story with PDP. You soon begin to hear the same story about PDP, the infighting within the party and the inability of the national leadership to put it together. But I guess this is the way uh, politics is played uh, in our own client here. Yeah. Let me go back to um, Sagala. He, he, of course, again, as a party member, it's interesting, uh, just as Mr. Shomoy has said, um, the intrigues and the intricacies and how politicking takes place within the different political parties. But the APC rose to power um, by a coalition movement of sorts, coming together with people and agreeing on a particular thing. And that's why the APC was birthed. Now, 2023 is around the corner. Campaign season is next year. Um, and there, like I said, teething problems that should not be again, re resurfacing, but we're seeing it over and over again. I, I want to take you to River State, the case between the Magnus Abbey faction and the Minister of Transportation, uh, Rotimi Amechi's faction. It cost them the tickets, all of the seats um, in the 2019 election, if I'm not mistaken. And they're still yeah. having that same issue as we speak. If the APC must be a formidable party, not just at the national level, but of course at all levels, what do you propose needs to be done to address these teething problems which might become, which might become a big monster that might not be able to be tamed? Well, you see, um, incidentally, the cases you have mentioned, uh, both in Rivers and uh, Zamfara, happened under my tenure as the National Legal Advisor of the party. So I saw it all firsthand. Uh, well, I think we have connection issues there. We'll throw that question back to Biodu. Mr. Shomi? Yes. I think you just help us uh, answer that question until he's back. Yes. Can you repeat the question, please? Well, I was talking about the fact that there seems to be a repeat of what's been happening over the years, especially for the case of Zamfara and River State. And I'm saying that the APC came together as a coalition of people who agreed uh, for a certain reason. Um, whatever the reason had been, maybe to unseat the uh, former president or to give Nigeria, you know, a, a better face. But they did have an agreement of sorts. Now, for the APC to become a formidable party again in 2023, what do they need to do to address these issues? You said, Mr. President, may not step into the matter. But what must they do not to, in order not to lose all of these seats come 2023? Yes, I think... Um, uh 
we should not forget one thing, that different um, bedfellows came together um, when EPC was being formed. Um, we had a faction of um, PDP, you know, called the new PDP, um, the match with APC, CPC, um, and I think um, one other, I can't remember whether it's one other tenant, APGA, you know, a faction of it. So having, you know, matched together, um, it then became, over a period of time, we began to see, you know, some trends, you know, we began to see people developing along the lines of whether you are from the Action, ACN, um, Action uh, Congress part, faction of the party or from the CPC faction of the party. Even presidential decisions were being interpreted along that line at a point in time. So uh, it means the unity was mechanical. You know, it was not a genuine unity. It was a mechanical unity uh, which was born you know, by the desire to drive away the PDP and take over the party, the leadership of the country. Now, having achieved that, we are now having a different situation where the leadership of the party um, at uh, some states, you know, have not been able to um, breach, you know, the gaps. And this has led to intense, you know, repeated the intense uh, division and loss of power in those states, uh, in rivers and in um, San Fran. So the question is, like you asked, what needs to be done uh, to ensure that uh, we do not have a repeat of what has been, been the fate of the party in those two states? Uh, it, to me, is very clear. It's most unlikely the principal actors will shift their seat. Most unlikely. The issue of talking about um, uh, the division of APC is about trying to get a, a political or a legal basis, you know, to excuse themselves from the party. They seem to have gotten to a point of no return. Then it has to be played, played out that APC is factionalized. Mm -hmm. Now, everything depends on one thing. Whoever emerges as a presidential candidate uh, will decide, would play a major role in rebuilding relationship in those areas. And I reckon that um, that may be the magic um, to resolve the problem. Uh, until then, I cannot see this issue being resolved because the issue of um, uh, primaries will also further deepen their division. Yeah. So but at the end of the day, um, we can only hope, one can only hope that uh, once a presidential candidate emerges, um, it will begin the process of reconciling all the factions. And how's, how's the party supposed to get to that point? Because, of course, it, it, the, the primaries, whether at the local government or the states, will be a building block for that presidential uh, aspirant to emerge. So, of course, if the foundation is uh, broken, how do we get to that p position? But I quickly want to you know, bring in the issue of the Kanu APC between Ganduje and Shakao. Don't also forget that uh, Lagos State, we had the factional, uh, the congresses, the parallel congresses. So it seems like everywhere you look, uh, there seems to be some parallel congresses holding every single, uh, in every single state. Uh, if these issues are not agreed uh, on, how does a presidential candidate emerge at the end of the day? Do we see crisscrossings or starting all over again? Well, um, following the primaries, you know, we, when the APC had the, um, the, the elections in the, the, the party leadership elections in different states, we saw how the whole thing um, became uh, so messy in some areas. There were divisions in some states or in many states, depending on how you're looking at it. Some of it are reconciliable, um, and some may not be reconciliable. Some of them are people who are opposed to each other within the same ruling party over a long period of time, and therefore, um, it's a uh, ploy to negotiate, you know, the, the, what, uh, what will come towards their own can. So it's not in all cases that the division in APC, you know, it's um, fatal to the party. Uh, some is a part of the process of political bargaining amongst the uh, political actors. So um, I cannot see this, uh, this division signing the, uh, sealing the, the death knell 
you know, for APC. I don't think so. I think just like APC, PDP is going to probably going to go through a similar thing. And that is one thing we should not forget. Uh, we should remember that uh, both political parties' uh, membership have crisscrossed into each other mm. at different points in time. So mm. they're likely going to go through it. I cannot see the APC dying as a result of that. Mm. No. Far from that, we are likely going to see the two parties going through different crises and then imagine, you know, with their um, strong presidential candidate to face the elections. As of today, uh, that seems to be the reality in my view. Okay. I cannot see how that will uh, be coming out. All right, in closing, I think we have uh, Babatunde Ogala back here. Um, quickly, I'll just wrap up the show with you, sir. Unfortunately, the internet uh, cut you off. I, I was asking... Um, uh, Mr. Show with me about the APC in Lagos. We remember the last primaries that were held. We saw parallel primaries. Um, how united or how um, in agreement is the APC in Lagos State, being that the leader of the party, the national leader of the party, hails from Lagos? Well, for APC in Lagos, we try to Honestly, yes, we hear some, like in every setting, in all political. Um, gardens, there will always be disaffection, there will always be complaints, there will always be people who will seek attention, there will always be people that just want to be pacified, there will be people who just want to rub on the back, a pat on the back, rub on the head. So I think and I'm convinced that APC in Lagos is as strong as ever. That is not to say there are no members who feel stronger by a few things, who complain about some things, but not so far, I have not heard or seen anybody who has, because of all of this, the thought of having the party disintegrated. It's just been complaints. And what are the basic complaints in Lagos? We want to be integrated. We are not being carried along. You know, um, what you're about to possibly call it, I said, they are just people who feel, okay, just pull us together. So for Lagos, I do not. We have just one single leadership. Um, so far, we you cannot say that we have any factual chairman. And anyway, the national leadership of the party, both in the past and in the present, have always had them recognize just one single leadership for the party. And it's that leadership that has um, run us through elections, we've had by elections, we just recently had local government elections um, just a few months ago, and then um, we just also had our world, local government, our state congresses. So for APC Lagos, I can assure you, it is as together as together can be. Okay. It is as strong as it will always be. And it's working assiduously preparing for the next round of election. Okay. In Lagos APC, you can take that to the bank. We do not have any major crisis or anything that is um, threatening us that is insurmountable. Okay. Like I said, we we'll always have grumblings, we we'll always have defections, we we'll always have complaints, we we'll always have uh, people who feel stronger by a few things. And that is why we are who we are. Um, everybody has a right to his um, right. um, free speech, to his aspirations, and whatever. So for Labour APC, I think you can go to sleep and be assured that the party in this state is as strong as ever. I mean, you look around you which opposition. Even those who you may consider or you may think are disenchanted, none of them is even threatened to sabotage the party. None of them is saying, I'm leaving the party. Okay. None does that. Right. And none is taking any step to sabotage the party. None of them is even contesting anything in any court of law. Okay. Well, we have to go. Thank you very much, Babatun Ogala, SAN, and Biodu Shomi, political analyst, former House of Assembly member, by the way, uh, Honorable Babatun Ogala. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Biodu Shomi is a political analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you. Well, we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we're going to look at issues surrounding police brutality. It seems to be a front burner issue in the country as of today. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about it.